Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our COVID-19 update. We are here on Monday, July 13th to share with you some basic data um, on Wisconsin as well as the counties in the Chippewa Valley to give you a couple of updates. And Luke Feedy is also with us again uh, to share a little mental health update as well. Um, we've had a lot going on with increasing cases across the state and across the nation. I think the news has been pretty clear that we have COVID-19 causing some significant challenges across the U.S. and we're seeing responses to that on a daily basis. Today we'll share state data. Um, Angie, will, Angie Weideman is here from Chippewa County Health Department and will share the Chippewa County information and some updates. I'll be back to share some Eau Claire data and then Luke will do the mental health update and then we'll close with questions at the end like usual. Um, our state update today, the total negative count for cases is 659,479, um, an increasing number of negative uh, uh, tests that have happened of a little over 6,000. Total positive cases of COVID-19 are 36,942, an increase of 494 positive cases. Um, 26 more people have been hospitalized since yesterday. The total deaths are at 820. The state saw several days of their highest positive cases in the last week or so. Between July 9th and 12th, 12, they had four of the highest days of cases since the pandemic began. Um, positive case numbers um, from 754 to 926, so the, a, a significant increase in case numbers over the last few days. Um, we know that the disease is spreading across Wisconsin. We know that there are strategies to decrease the spread. And really, our goal is to continue to remind everyone that we need to do our part in that. Um, keeping physical distance is our best way to slow the spread of disease, but certainly wearing face masks, um, staying home when you're sick, and all of those other common sense strategies are critically important as well. I'm going to share, um, I have Angie come up and share a little bit about Chippewa County, and then I'll be back with some Eau Claire County data. Thank you, Liska, and thank you to the Eau Claire City County Health Department for having me today. Uh, my name is Angie Weideman. I'm the Chippewa County Public Health Director and wanted to start with a status update for Chippewa County. Um, currently, Chippewa County has 140 people who have tested positive for COVID-19. 35 of those individuals are actively being monitored by public health, and 105 people have been released from public health isolation. Um, just a reminder, in order to be released from public health isolation, the individual must be well for at least three days without using a fever reducer at least 10 days after their symptoms have started. Uh, currently in Chippewa County, we have had 5,930 people who have had negative test results. Um, recently in Chippewa County, we have seen an increase in COVID-19 cases and close contacts associated with people um, who are not social distancing at work, specifically in break rooms and communal spaces. I understand and appreciate that many people miss their coworkers and that often when they're at work, the only time that they have with their coworkers is during breaks or lunches. Um, seeing the people that we enjoy spending time with is important for our mental health. However, our physical health is important too and that physical space is primary. Um, if you do wanna take breaks or lunches with coworkers, please remember to wear a mask in break rooms. If you're eating lunch together, please make sure you have at least six feet between you and others in the break room. If you are a business owner, please set your break rooms up in a fashion so that people have at least six feet between them and their coworkers. Um, you can eat outside and still physically distance, or you can eat alone in your office and set up a virtual meeting um, to connect with a coworker over lunch. And by exposing yourself to your coworkers, you're also exposing your coworkers to everyone that you've been exposed to. Please be considerate and remember to wear face masks and socially distance. Additionally, it is important that people stay home and not have contact with others if they have symptoms of illness, and that's any illness and even mild symptoms. If you do have symptoms, we recommend that you connect with your healthcare provider to be tested. 
It is important that while you wait for your test results that you stay home to ensure that you are not exposing others. Your primary health care provider and or public health nurse will contact you when, you receive, when the test results are in and they will give you additional information to follow as well. Finally, I want to take a moment to thank our local, regional, and state partners. By continuing to work together, our commitment will slow the spread of COVID-19, making it possible to safely reopen our local economy while conserving the progress that we've made to save lives. Now, Liska will be back to give more updates on Eau Claire. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Um, it is good to have partners working on all of this together. It's certainly been a long haul and we have a long ways to go until we get a vaccine and really can start preventing this disease. Eau Claire update. We have 10,382 negative tests of Eau Claire County residents. That's an increase of 991 since last Friday. Uh, positive cases are now at 340. We have had 17 more cases since Friday. And of those, um, uh, 340, 235 meet the definition for recovered, as Angie described. They are out of isolation. We are starting now on Mondays to be reporting jail data. That's been a request that's been made by the community partners and in partnership with the jail, we will be starting to report that and have that also available on our website. But to date, we have had 33 individuals in the jail tested for COVID-19, um, six positive cases and six recovered cases. Again, as we've talked about before, all of those cases in the jail have happened at intake or while that individual was in uh, quarantine during their first 14 days while staying at the jail. Um, that process has been regularly done since the start of COVID-19 back in March and has been a successful way to make sure that COVID-19 doesn't reach the general jail population um, with new inmates into the jail. So that update, um, again, will be provided on Mondays likely moving forward. Um, locally, um, our case numbers obviously are going up and down a bit like we typically have happened, but our seven-day positivity rate has been around 5%. Um, last week, our 14-day positivity was at 14.5%, our highest in a long time. So we certainly had a large number of positive cases in the week prior to this past week, and now it's leveled off a bit more again. We did have a testing event on Friday where we did a large number of asymptomatic um, tests because of an outbreak that was happening. It was a partnership between Chippewa and Eau Claire counties and a couple of other counties that had um, providers of services where we were really looking at people that were employees as well as the individuals living in that situation. We're still awaiting those results and we'll see where that data uh, comes in. There has been a lot of conversation in Eau Claire about the use of face masks, as we've talked about last week. In our newest order in Eau Claire, we did add to the requirements for all businesses and public spaces to um, consider policy where face masks would be required for both customers as well as staff. Um, that new requirement in the order to at least consider it um, at each business as a way to really look at decreasing the spread of disease is one of the strategies that we have in this community to really think about decreasing spread. Last week as well, the Chamber of Commerce released a statement supporting face mask use as a way to encourage economic recovery, really by keeping the disease spread as slow as possible. We have employees and customers able to get to the businesses in Eau Claire the way we want that to happen. This week, tomorrow, uh, City Council for the City of Eau Claire will also be considering a face mask resolution that talks about um, their support of community members using face masks. Um, that will be on the agenda tomorrow for City Council. It's not a requirement, but it is a, it is a statement by City Council to really say that this is something that the council members are supporting. It's being brought forward by two City Council members outside 
side of the work of the health department, but certainly something that, as we saw it move forward, is uh, an important statement in this community to really say that um, face masks can make a difference. We um, can use those to be supportive of one another um, and make sure that we slow the spread of disease down. Um, the health department will continue to support face mask use as a best practice. So before we come back for questions, I'll have Luke Feedy come up and he's gonna share a little um, update from Eau Claire County Behavioral Health Services and then I'll be back and we can answer questions. Thanks. Thank you, Liska. Good Monday afternoon to everybody. So many of us throughout this spring and summer have made conscious decisions to forego vacations and trips on account of the COVID-19 pandemic. Many of us have canceled planned trips with friends and family. And we often use these vacations and this time to reflect on our personal lives, our relationships, and a chance to connect with one another. There are several ways we can still take some time uh, to get some respite from the important work that we do day to day. One way to intentionally take some time is to schedule a mental health day. Now mental health day is a day of rest and restoration. It's beneficial when we feel mentally overwhelmed, if we feel depressed, anxious, or if we're dealing with high levels of stress. One example of stress that may be familiar to some of us is trying to effectively do our jobs teach our children and live through a pandemic at the same time. I think a number of us can relate to that. While time away from work and work responsibilities can be helpful, there are ways that we can make the most of a mental health day. While binging Netflix for hours on end may be very tempting, especially with the new Unsolved Mysteries, uh, it does not address the reasons why you may be feeling overwhelmed. So it's important to take inventory and identify the reasons that we feel stressed, overwhelmed, anxious, etc. If we find ourselves feeling tired or exhausted, perhaps time scheduled to catch up on our sleep, scheduled downtime away from our screens, away from uh, social media, or restorative yoga class might be helpful. If you're anxious about an ailment that you have, or something you've been dealing with for a while and want to see the doctor, maybe you haven't been to the dentist in a while. Uh, it's better to schedule those on the mental health day and help alleviate some of the anxiety that's around that issue. With many of us working remotely and attending meetings via web platforms, many of us, myself included, don't move nearly enough when we're here at work. It feels like we're often sitting in front of a screen. A mental health day is a great time to schedule that bike or that run that you've been wanting to do. Some of us don't have the capacity to take days off and continue to cover our financial responsibilities. For those of us that cannot take days off, we can use exercises like mindful meditation, guided imagery. Sometimes just five minutes a day can be very helpful and can lead to lower levels of stress. When we take these times to recharge, we can come back to our responsibilities with more energy and often a fresh perspective. This often leads to us being more productive and happier in our work environment. It is important to note that you don't have to feel overwhelmed or exhausted to take a mental health day. These days when used productively and proactively can help prevent things from getting worse and provide us a way to maintain our health. At the end of a mental health day or restorative exercise, it's often okay to reward ourselves with a couple of those episodes of our new favorite show. Thanks to all of you for the hard work that you're doing in your everyday jobs, including those in public health and in the media. And take care of yourselves as we all move through this time together. Thanks. Thank you, Luke. I'm not sure my significant other thought that a mental health day meant cleaning the basement, which is what he and I got to do on Saturday morning. It was very satisfying, though. Good for my mental health. Um, 
So again, please stay tuned to our website. Um, we do update that very regularly. It has data changes every day. We put all of the newest resources there. That website is COVID-19 eauclair.org. Um, the COVID call center remains open Monday through Friday. That's a place where you can get some additional questions answered that you can't find answers for on the website. That number is 715-831-7425. So again, that, those are good places to get some good basic information. We also are on Facebook as our other county health departments um, with information available to you there. We'll be back on Wednesday streaming on Facebook Live with more information. Um, and now uh, Angie and I are available for questions. Yes. Uh, this question can really be for both of you. Um, topic on a lot of people's minds right now is the upcoming school year. What's going to happen with, with each, I guess, school district? Uh, I guess what kind of discussions have been had so far with, with the school districts and I guess ultimately whose decision is it going to be regarding if schools open and if they do, how they open and require and I'm assuming you mean K through 12 schools as the focus, yeah. So the question really is about what happens with school um, coming in the next month. The start of school is going to be with us sooner than any of us can anticipate. But school will be coming. How are decisions going to be made with how school will happen in the fall? Who will be part of those decisions? And what's currently going on to work through that? I'll share a little bit about what's happening in Eau Claire, and I'm sure Angie has some information to share about Chippewa as well. We've been meeting regularly with superintendents across Eau Claire uh, County. All of the superintendents for the districts, both public and private, have been meeting. Actually, there was a meeting today. Um, those superintendents are reviewing the DPI guidance that has come out. DPI has provided some really good starting points and strategies to do um, a look at what are the best practices. And each of our school districts is working through how best to make that happen. All the school districts in Wisconsin did also receive some basic supplies, face masks, thermometers, along with the guidance from DPI as a starting point. Our job in public health is really to walk through with school districts to really be asking those tough questions about what is safe, how to make school happen in the safest way possible um, for both the staff, um, the faculty, the teachers, and the students. And that really, like it is true, in the rest of our community means how do we keep physical distance? How do we use face masks? How do we make sure surfaces are cleaned and we are keeping our circles as small as possible? Part of that strategy also includes a really careful look at making sure that healthy kids are in school and healthy faculty and staff are in school. Um, it is important to also pay attention to the fact that some kids and some families and some faculty do have extenuating circumstances that make it difficult for them given this pandemic. And they are at higher risk for this disease and coming up with creative ways to make sure that learning and work can still happen with those groups is part of what we're also talking about. Um, in Eau Claire, our activity level is high right now for COVID-19. That does mean that schools have to think seriously about if we are at that stage come end of August, what can school look like if we are still having widespread community spread of disease? So health department's job is to stay on top of the data, um, share best practices and help walk through um, the checklists and the surveys that are out there. In Eau Claire right now, that, that's happening via regular meetings, weekly meetings, and each of the school districts right now is going through a survey tool to really assess where they're at and what kind of support they need. So the results of that will be our next step. Thank you. And very similar to what Lisa said in Eau Claire, or about for Eau Claire County, Chippewa County also is meeting weekly with superintendents from the public and private schools. Um, we field questions, look at any concerns that people have. Some topics that people have been really interested in are how do we hold music class because we know that singing um, projects respiratory droplets. And so looking at can you hold music class outside or with a smaller number of people, um, is there space enough to 
to really provide adequate safety um, for situations like that. Another conversation or hot topic for schools has been lunch. How do we serve lunch in an adequate form and fashion? Um, we have one school district that is talking about um, even if the kids are if the kids are in person in the fall when the school year typically starts that they may have one day where they are asking teachers and students to do virtual learning um, even though the teacher is in the classroom using iPads and apps just so that kids are ready in the case that they would need to go to an all virtual environment so um, some of the schools are really doing a great job thinking about ways to prepare students and staff um, another thing that we're doing with our our school districts is coming up with a training for teachers um, that does talk about symptoms and how to help identify symptoms, how to keep themselves well, how to keep their students well, um, and creating a little handbook for teachers to be able to do that. Thank you. And as you can anticipate, school is a tough topic. It's a very complex kind of community system that happens in a school environment. And um, there, there's a lot of reason that all of us would love to have school happen. It's going to be different this year. And I think that is one of the choices we will have to make if we want in-person school to move forward. If, if disease spread is not at a rate that is going to prohibit it, we, we still need to do it in a safe way. So it will look and feel different, I'm sure. Um, and I'm sure people are really looking forward to an opportunity to see if we can make that happen in the fall. Yeah. Sure. So the question is around face mask use, and and we will we're planning actually on Wednesday to spend a bit more time on this topic, so I can give more concrete data. But the question is related to you know why wear a face mask? What is what are we protecting? What's the chance of protection? The um, the overwhelming data at this point in time with the respiratory disease is that face masks can decrease the amount of respiratory droplets that go out in the air from the person that is wearing that face mask. It is not as clear that my wearing of a face mask will protect me from someone that isn't wearing a face mask, but it is clear that the face mask does stop some droplets from entering the environment around us. So. The point of wearing a cloth face covering is really to catch your droplets to make sure that the person wearing the face mask is not spreading disease. It's about how we care about each other. My wearing a face mask is a, is a signal that I care about the people that are around me. Um, the studies um, that have been done on good cloth face masks do appear that they can be protective um, in, in up to the 89% range. Again, they are very variable based on the type of face mask worn. So part of our challenge is making sure that it's not just any face covering that's used, but one that is got made out of really good, tightly woven fabric that someone wears correctly and that is fitted. So it isn't true that any covering over your nose and mouth works. And in fact, if you only kind of wear it and if you um, use that as a, as a way to think you're protecting yourself and others, but you don't keep physical distance, we're really not in any better spot. The goal is to wear a well-fit, um, well-made face covering and also to keep distance. If both parties are wearing it, it does show that the kind of respiratory disease, the droplet disease that we're dealing with, with COVID-19, the risk will be lower. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, last week, there was a situation where there were a couple events that happened in Ontario that required evacuation of people. Um, was the health department involved with that at all? And if there was someone who's supposed to maintain quarantine but is told to evacuate the home, I guess, how is that kind of stuff handled within, within the city? Sure. 
So the question is related to a couple of evacuations that happened in the city of Eau Claire last week related to different events. And how does that work with something like COVID-19 where people are in isolation or quarantine? Um, anybody that's in isolation and quarantine is in regular contact with the health department. If they need to leave their location, they are communicated with. We did have that happen with one of the um, evacuation orders that we had last week where we were working with individuals that had to be evacuated. And a location was found and they were able to return quickly, but it was um, done in a coordinated way. I was one of the people that had to be evacuated last week, but it's certainly something that we are um, in partnership with the police department and the others that really have to respond to incidents like that to make sure that people that are isolated in quarantine can be kept, they can be protected and those around them can be as well. All right. Thank you very much for joining us today. We will be back again on Wednesday, uh, live streaming on Facebook, and we look forward to talking to you then.